Hello, it's Jesse here, and we're going to be working on a lead acid battery conversion to a lithium ion battery. Um, this is mainly going to be a walkthrough for um, converting all 1936 and 1957 big twin motorcycles, which they're a little bit more involved than the 50 and later motorcycles. But, anyways, stock for like stock 58 and later motorcycles, all the way up to about 64, you just then you just have to worry about swapping the battery on those because the um, the lithium ion battery requires uh, a regulator and not a relay. So this is what the this is what a relay looks like, and then the regulators are big ones, of course. Um, in some of my other videos, I've talked about relays, how they function with the three brush generator, but um, and then. 57 and older motorcycles all take a three brush generator. So what we got to do is kind of either rewire a three brush generator or or find a decent two two brush generator and convert it over. We're we'll going through all the different steps here coming up in this video, so kind of stay tuned to all this. But anyways, um, like I was saying, 58 and later you just swap the battery out for the old, and these six volt systems already use the regulator, so you might want to get a might want to get one with a higher amp hour rating, a battery, a lithium ion battery if you want to do that. Otherwise, uh, 65 and later 12 volt motorcycles use regulators as well. The, all you got to do there for them is just, of course, to get the right voltage and the good cranking amps for the starter. You might want to uh, get one with higher amp hour rating as well. So, all right, let's get started here. So stay tuned. All right, so like I said, this is pretty much a, a walkthrough or a conversion for 36 to 57 motorcycles. So I decided to make a modification to my 40 UH. I mainly did just didn't want to run the lead acid battery in my 40 UH. Um, no particular reason. I just didn't want the possibility of acid spilling, and I kind of wanted a lithium ion battery from from everything I've been reading lately about them. So, anyways, um, I read about how they're more dependable battery, and they're smaller, and they're not as heavy, and they last longer, they charge good. Um, but anyway, so lithium-ion battery requires a regulator to to charge it correctly. You can't use a relay because it doesn't like give the right kind of voltage current continuously, like a regulator can. The relay doesn't do it. Um, so yeah, I've seen a lot of other people with other bikes, like kind of like mine, and you know, panheads and stuff, and they've done all this. So I kind of wanted to, my motorcycle to remain a six volt system. So I kind of have a little list of the parts that I need to come up with or have to make this conversion possible. So kind of first off, we need a, a decent operational two brush generator or a three brush generator converted to two brush, like I was saying earlier. Um, I don't really want to convert this over to a two brush system. Um, I kind of want to leave this one alone. So anyway, we're going to get a, a model, probably a model 61 I have laying around here and use that. All right, so we're back here. Um, I'm working on a modification to my old 40 Harley. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a lighter two brush generator. So what I'm going to do here, what I did so far is I just swapped out the pan head gear and put this flat head one on and I got it down, torqued down and it's ready to go. And so anyway, I'm going to probably clean it up a little bit, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice looking anyway. I mean, the paint's kind of rough, but otherwise this Model 61 is in pretty good shape. Um, I want to stick with 6 volts, so that's so why I'm going to use the 61 because it has the, the upgraded needle bearing back here. Like I've talked about before with other generator videos I've done. And this 32E is going to be like, I don't know, this 3 brush one. It'll, it'll work great. It's it's excellent. It's, it tests out good. Um, like I did in a different video, but it's more of like a 
collector item mostly <laughs> so and it's really good shape and I just the main thing you got to worry about when you're switching over the to different different gears and stuff um, especially on the flatheads they have a certain distance from from this flat surface here this edge with the gas with the gasket to here the shop manual talks about it but it's supposed to have a certain distance here between the face of this gear and this distance here and right now I'm at 1.80 and I think I'm right on where I need to be according to the book and this one when I push this new gear on of course it has this this nut and stuff sticking out but it's okay because the part that this rides on has a cupped area here for this to go into it's all right though so this is not something to worry about but this surface here across here and with the gasket on on this surface comes out to the same dimension that this one is even so even though this is a later generator so that's great great deal so that means this is going to pop right in and work and then what I got to do also next is I got to take well, something else that happened when they went to this bigger generator. What they did was um, these holes where it mounts to the to the motor. These are five sixteenths, and on the three brush ones, these holes in here, somewhere along here, of course it's <laughs> well anyway, somewhere along here, they're sitting. And they are quarter inch holes. Can't seem to find it. But anyways, there's two of them. There it is, right there. Thought I saw it. Okay, so yeah, these are quarter inch holes. Quarter 24. These are 5 16 24. Luckily, all I can do, all I have to do, or need to do, or should do, would be is put a Healy coil in here. And it'll work fine. That's what everybody does when they convert these over. It's either that or we rewire this three brush one into a two brush one and it'll be fine. But with the bigger pole shoes and the bigger armature and the better brushes, this generator will perform better than it, I feel, and what I've read, it'll perform better than the, than the three brush converted to a two brush. Because it's got smaller coils, smaller armature, smaller brushes as well. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. So stay tuned to this conversion here as we're working on my 1940 Harley here with putting this all together. So stay tuned to this video. All right, so I got this uh, Model 61 all sanded up. It's ready to get repainted. And we'll repaint it. And, but I don't think I'm going to use it for the flathead. I think I'm going to, I think I might have changed my mind again a little bit. But I'm going to stick with the 61. But I got another one. I'm going to rebuild it. And uh, I got it all sanded down too and cleaned up. It's in pretty good shape. Um, it doesn't function though. Other than that, it's in pretty good shape. So it does spin freely. So I'm going to take it apart, replace the armature and the field coils, the brushes. I'll have to replace those too. And then I'm going to replace the main bearing in the front here. Upgrade it. So. Um, yeah, stay tuned to that, and we can see uh, we'll be working on this rebuilding this generator for the 1940 UH for this conversion we're working on. Uh, I just know that I had this one laying around and wanted to rebuild it also, so I just think I'm going to feel better about rebuilding this one with new parts and running it. Um, there's a possibility that this could be uh, a really good generator as well. I mean, we watched it test out good. So what I'll do is I'll swap out, once this is rebuilt, I'll swap out the gear here, like I talked about, and the, um, and the nut here, put in the front of this one, of course, and repaint this. And what we'll do is, um, this, see, like in 32Es and 52Es, they had this cover on the back, the optional chrome, but this one had a black one. And I was going to run black, but what I'll do is, I'll put this uh, this chrome cover on the end of it. It'll just go right on there like that. Um, doesn't quite look exactly the same, but it'll look all nice and like it kind of belongs when I put it on. So it's not too of a crazy of modification as for I'm trying to keep this bike 
somewhat as as original as I as I can. So, so that's kind of why I'm sticking with like a Harley generator. But uh, but anyway, yeah. Stay tuned here as we get ready to rebuild this generator. All right, so here's the done Model 61 rebuild um, that we're using for this conversion of switching the UH 1940 UH uh, Harley over to a two brush generator system. Um, there's a couple things that have to happen here with this, but I'm going to go over it in this, in this segment, this uh, whole video here. And uh, we'll start off just by saying um, so, two brush generators are a little bit better than three brush generators. They, uh, they have a better system that actually helps generate the power that's needed for the bike and all the accessories that end up getting added on throughout the years. So that's why they went to the two brush generator. Um, when you're doing the conversion on a 57 and older motorcycle, because that's what 37 or 57 is the uh, is the last year of the three brush generator, or because in 58 they went to the two brush style. Um, the differences between the two, besides the two brush and the three brush, is the fact that the body is a different diameter. It's a little bit bigger on the 332e and the 50 52e. Uh, e. So. Um, what I mean is that the, when this thing sits in the cradle, it's designed on the 57 and older motors. It's on the left, uh, the right side um, engine case. It has to sit in that cradle, so you have to shim it, so it helps support the weight of the generator. Right? Okay, so the difference is about two, the thickness of two of these stacked on top of each other. Two of these uh, little six inch machinist rulers. This is actually a five inch one or yeah, it goes to six. So so um anyways I found a chunk of a piece nice piece of aluminum and I curled it, curved it so it fit the body of the of the generator. So when it sits in the cradle and this is a shim, it'll help support it more evenly and more it'll distribute the weight better. So um, that's one of the things you got to look for you got to do for sure because you have to shim it because you can't just like let it sit in there and rest and wherever it is it is because then this gear won't be in the right position so when the teeth are in conjunction with each other they won't they'll be in a good the right angle they need to be at instead of all off to one side and then it just wears the teeth all down weird and and stuff the other thing we gotta end up doing here is change the. I've mentioned this earlier, an earlier segment here, that we gotta change the, the size of these mounting bolt holes. From uh, we gotta make them to quarter inch because I don't want to drill out my engine case to make this work because that's what a lot of people did also when they would convert. That's why a lot of the the bikes out there have enlarged case holes right there where they. They made the bolt hole bigger so it fit this generator, the 5 16 24 instead of the quarter 24. So instead of doing that and ruining my case, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a Healy coil in here, drop this 5 16 down to quarter inch 24, and then I can use the proper bolts that go through my case, and uh, that's probably a better way to do it. Uh, it won't hurt nothing because you're gonna have the support added support from this because I believe in 1958 when they went to this bigger generator they got rid of that that curved uh, section in the engine case on the right side and that's why they went to the bigger bolts and then there's a strap that comes across the top here and holds it down on the, in the engine as well so you'll be seeing all that as we mount this thing to the motor coming up in later videos but but anyway uh, as for now I put a gasket on here and tried it. I got the right measurement, like the book says. So I think we're ready to move on to the next part, which will be putting the Healy coils in and getting it ready to go onto the onto the motor. And then uh, move on to the next step in this conversion to two brush process here. So stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna put the Healy coils in now. Uh, looks like this, Healy coil looks like this. Has a little tab on the bottom here. 
So that goes in first. You run this in until it stops. And then we turn it and with this piece and it breaks off the little tab. Then we recover that little tab that breaks off with this nice extractor, magnet extractor, extractor thing. Um, luckily we won't have to use the tap. I'll probably just use the tap just to clean it up or chase the threads a little bit. But um, the 516s hold that you end up turning it into when you usually heal e-coil stuff um, is already here. So it's going to be kind of easy hopefully. So I'll stay tuned while we work on that. Okay, so we're going to run this uh, tap in here and clean out these threads. Get all the grime out of there or make sure there's actually threads in there, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> So I went right in pretty good here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do this. Of course, of course it's a, um, a blind hole, so it, it has an actual stop. It doesn't go into the in there, so it's going to be even more easier. So you just got to put it in there and stop it and then break that tab off, like I was saying. All right, so I got that all out. There's a bunch of crap coming out there. And then off to this side here. Oh yeah, there's threads here too, so that's great. And we got it all cleaned up. All right. All right, we had some stuff come out too. All right, I'll just get some air there and blow them out. So stay tuned here. Right. So then next we put in the Healy coil. So, well, yeah, so we'll start it here. Start my hand there. And we'll start this with my hand. Make sure we put that uh, tab inward. And I don't know, maybe I'll. Uh, Use some Loctite to help hold them in there, but they usually just go in there and they don't need to do that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens here. So that little notch on this little notch on this tool here goes right under that little a little uh, tab thing that's there. So, geez, there we go. All right, we're running it in until it stops. Pretty straightforward operation here. Like I said earlier, I didn't want to mess up my case by just, you know, drilling out the drilling out the case and putting the larger bolts in. So I mean, there we go, and then this side. All right, so stay tuned here. All right, so we'll run this one in the rest of the way now. Until it stops there. All right, now all you do is just back it up because it grips itself and then it, it breaks off a little tab in there. Here we go. All right, so now it's extract it, extract it, and there we go. Nothing to it. We just got a Healy coiled. So now them quarter-inch bolts will go right here and thread right into those. So, all right, it's about ready to move on to the the other items on the list here. We got work, get, and do work with. All right, item number two is the lithium battery, lithium ion battery. There's a lot of them out there, of course, and uh, so it's hard to choose what you want, but you can pick whatever you want. But um, my 40UH is a kickstart only bike, of course, uh, so cold cranking actually wasn't really a concern. 
but I did want a high number of amp hours. So I went with this one here. Uh, this is a Shory lithium ion battery. It's uh, part, it's own part number right, it's right there. LFX 18A2-BS06. It's a six volt battery, 18 amp hours, 270 cold cranking amps, maximum charge rate of 18 amps. So anyways, um, yeah, so anyways, if, if this lithium ion batteries are like an anti-gravity battery, so you can uh, lay it on its side, upside down, all that kind of stuff, and it'll still function. Unlike with like a lead acid battery where all the acid will just run out of it if it if it gets a little bit past, you know, being upright. Um, it has this kind of battery here it has its own charger, and uh, you have to get that separately. Um, and then if you go with 6 volt, you'll need a special 6 volt cable for the charger. And that's sold separately. I have a 12 volt version of this one in a 72 Norton 750, which I like a lot. And that's kind of why I was particular to buying this brand, this type here. So, uh, so I kind of had some history with one of them. So, and it worked, seemed, to work, seemed to work pretty good. So, this will be, uh, this is like the item number two out of the, out of the three part or whatever uh, three different pe pieces we need to get to make this uh, conversion work so anyway let's stay tuned here this next item we got here we're going to be using um, is pretty sweet so uh, let's open it up here it is pretty much a fake battery um, this is what the original batteries kind of look like from 1957 and older motorcycles. And it's a fake battery because this piece on the top here comes off. Just like this. And it's hollow on the inside. So this will work perfect for holding that uh, lithium ion battery inside of here. So it's kind of like a necessity because then I can store, make it almost like like it was originally, you know, because I just hooked the battery up to the terminals on the inside here, set the battery down inside there, put this lid back on, put it in the oil tank. You'll see all this coming up as we start putting this bike together. But um, you slide this right inside the horseshoe oil tank and then hook it up like normal because it has the terminals here. And this is made by Bates. And you can find these around. They're pretty cool. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. I and mean, um, you really can't even tell the difference for, for, um, compared to like the original battery. And it's, you know, and it's, it's limited size. This is kind of its only downfall for you. You gotta find a certain battery that actually fit inside there. So that's kind of the reason why I went with that, that lithium ion battery. You've just seen it, it fits in here perfectly. Um, and then we'll make some wires and we'll we'll do we'll hook this thing all up and pretty much make a battery out of this thing. So when it's all together, um, of course this end and this terminal over here will be live. So it'll look like a battery. And then when it gets all put together uh, in the motorcycle, it's held down with that uh, with the top cover thing, and you'll see all that coming up. But um, yeah. So stay tuned here. All right, so this is this will be considered the front of the motorcycle here. So the negative is towards the front. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, set it, we'll just leave it like this, and we kind of want to figure out where we want our battery to sit at in there. So okay, so we're going to go on the side with it like this. Um, you wouldn't normally do this with acid battery, remember? So the anti-gravity battery, we can run it like this. So what we'll do is we'll have to make a couple, uh, couple wires to come off these terminals, and then, then we'll be able to when we open this up, we'll be able to like this with it, and the wires will be coming out and hooked up to there. So 
when we hit bumps and stuff in this rigid frame, we don't want this barrier bouncing around inside of here. So what we'll do is we'll, re we'll re be retaining this battery still in here by putting some like of these uh, these little strips of Velcro here. Um, you can pick these up out anywhere in the store, and we'll just stick them on there and make it to where the battery can just sit nice up against this corner and this corner. Then we can run our, our wires up along the side here. So we have the top terminals here. And there's also side terminals. So well, we can pretty much do either way we want. If we'll do the side, then we won't have to worry about the clearance here. So yeah, so anyways, we'll get to working on this here in a minute. And uh, so stay tuned. All right, so here we go. I got the wires all kind of prepped up here. Um, I went with about 12 inches, and uh, that way there's a little bit extra, so there I can yeah take the top off a little bit if I have to. Um, anyway, I'm gonna work on putting some heat shrink on here, some old old style uh, wire, and then crimp these uh, ends on. So. Stay tuned here while I get these pigtails uh, finished up here. There we go. We got the pigtails all done here, these leads. I got the heat shrink on there nice. And now we'll just hook up to the battery here. All right. So we figured that we were going to put it in like this. So it looks like the positive is going to be down and negative is going to be up. I mean, the same length, so one will just have more slack than the other one okay so anyway uh, the, the hardware that goes in here has has a little foam piece on the back to help hold it in place so we'll just uh, slide them in nice and then the other one disappeared I guess oh it's in there already <laughs> must have put that in already okay so anyways Reference the terminals, of course, positive on the bottom again. We'll hook it up down here, and then the negative will hook up onto here. So stay tuned here while I work on that. Use some electrical contact grease on the terminals here, so this can go in here. It can stay in there for a while without it needing any service for a while. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is this little gray spot right here. This is where you hook your special adapter up to on this battery to charge it. With that special six volt, uh, six volt style um, adapter that comes with the battery, or you gotta buy separately. I mean, so yeah, stay tuned here. We're gonna work on finishing up, putting this in here. We're gonna attach some uh, Velcro strips in here now and then set it in there. So stay tuned here. All right, so with these command strips, they're pretty nice and convenient and they hold up really well um, this should do it one on this side up against the wall of the battery box here and one on the bottom the bottom of the box so now we'll just take the there's there's cover off here and get ready to put in there and the one off this side Alright, slide down in there. <clears throat> okay, well, I just gotta get it to stick really nice. This back one isn't sticking very good here. So, just gonna wiggle with this here. So, stay tuned here. All right, so there we go. I got in there good. Just needed to find a good spot for it. So it's attached now. So it's not gonna fall out. <laughs> yep, so now we just take these ends and hook them up here to this part here. So stay tuned here. 
We'll have this all finished in a couple seconds here. All right, so there we go. We got it all wired up and hooked up. So now let's put it back together. Um, this was the front over here. So the base logo was on the front. So that was the negative side. So now we just roll our extra wire up out of the way there and pop the cover on. There we go. Really nice, clean looking battery here. And it's all got modern technology in there. So it's pretty sweet, slick looking. I'm really happy with how this turned out here. So now let's just uh, see here what we got. And looks like we have six volts, 6.4 volts. So it's working. Now we're just putting the motorcycle. So stay tuned. Got a little bit left here to do on this there segment. All right, so the next component we need for this conversion is a regulator. Um, this is the later style regulator, and seeing how this is a 57 and older bike, it has the relay, which this is what that is. I don't really want to run a big one like this, so I found a component made by Samwell Supplies, and they create um, what is called a, a V-Tronic engineering regulator, which looks like a cutout so here's that unit right here and it is mimicked and camouflaged just like this this original relay here was so all we got to do is take like this cover here or cover like it um, here's one that's been repainted and uh, we will uh, put it on there like that and we'll just uh, use this instead that way I'll have this big clunky regulator if I'm trying to find a spot to put it on my bike to run this uh, two brush system and regulator system and when you buy this Vtronic uh, by Samuel Supplies uh, Vtronic uh, regulator it looks like a, a relay it comes with instructions uh, telling you how to wire it up and all that stuff it's pretty much kind of what I'm going over right now like uh, Install a two brush generator if you haven't already. Um, <laughs> remove the old regulator or cut out if you're coming from a three brush. So it's just kind of the same thing I've been talking about. And then it talks about how to install it, how to wire it, because it gets wired differently than how the original relay is wired. But it's all right here. There's a special wire you got to hook up from the armature to the to the um, actual relay or regulator itself and it comes with a kit as well uh, so and it's even old type wire so it kind of like camouflages right into it so it doesn't look like it's out of place so what we'll do is we'll just put the cover on there like like so and then I'll be able to install it on my bike so all right on, uh, I think this pretty much is getting close to the end now here on this conversion. All I gotta do is put the stuff in the bike. All right, well, this end pretty much ends the segment here on this conversion to the lithium ion battery. Um, so, all you gotta really do is just pick out your two brush generator you need, and uh, or a three brush that it's converted over to a two brush system, and then. Uh, your regular you need whether it be that vtronic style one you saw earlier that it's blended and kind of camouflaged as an old relay or or an old regular original looking regulator um things how this is a 57 and older this requires a strap here's what that strap looked like and then and then then that spacer so we can have it set in the right position and of course the this nice uh, camouflaged battery here um, which turned out really nice it was uh, we've got the lithium-ion battery in there and um, anyways uh, that's made by Bates so just look for the 57 and older style battery Bates battery box and you should be able to find it somewhere so uh, hope you enjoyed all this so uh, we'll see this coming up later in some other videos. We're going to start putting that 1940 UH together. You'll, we'll, we'll talk about putting these parts on and hooking them up. So 
See you again soon.